Confirming Nigeria as a polio-free nation by August 2020 is gradually becoming a reality as the African Regional Commission for Certification of Polio Eradication, ARCC, accepts the country's wild polio virus free documentation. Chairman of the ARCC, Professor Rose Leke, gave the indication at a meeting with the national team led by the executive director of the Nigeria National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Shahoub, and partners Professor Rose Leke stated that ARCC, which is an organ of the World Health Organization, WHO, has for the past years assessed the performance of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. And joining us now to talk more about Nigerian status in polio is Dr. Faisal Shayub, Executive Director and CEO, National Primary Health Development Agency. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. So we've been having a backward, forward progress, you know, in the certification process. Now we've been certified polio-free. How is it? What's the excitement about? Oh, it's it's really an exciting time uh, to be a Nigerian. Uh, to say for over three decades we've been on the same uh, pathway to try and see how we can uh, forever uh, prevent any child from dying or being paralyzed from the wild polio virus and then finally you know yesterday uh, for all the evidences that we've presented to uh, be very clear to the African regional uh, body of the WHO to say yes we're actually wild polio free it's it's really elating but at the same time it's humbling humbling because at this moment in time uh, we've uh, really uh, been standing on the shoulders of uh, many heroes uh, many, many Nigerian heroes uh, that in the last few years have been in the front lines uh, working hard to make sure that every single kid in Nigeria got two drops of oral polio vaccine you know it's been many years of our traditional leaders providing leadership mm -hmm. especially in the last 10 years mm -hmm. but in the last uh, four to five years it's really been about how mr. president has shown leadership mm -hmm. especially in 2016 when we suffered one of the setbacks that you've talked yes. about you know he really stood up made the funds available motivated health workers in the mm -hmm. federal ministry of health the national primary health care development agency all of the staff at the agency, our development partners, our donors, particularly Dr. Um, Mr. Aliko Dangote mm. and, and his foundation, Mr. Bill Gates, everybody coming together, making sure that for once in our lifetime, we're able to make sure that no child in Nigeria is paralyzed from polio. It's really, really amazing. You know, we were three, Nigeria, Afghanistan, and India, and we sort of beat them to eat. How can we maintain the status quo? Right, we have to just not only do more of the same things, but it actually raise the ante. Uh, we have lived through the last few years learning from all of the lessons of polio eradication. And one thing that this has brought us uh, to the front, the front of um, a real cutting edge public health expertise. Uh, all of the lessons we've learned in the last 30 mm. years uh, is what we brought to bear to finish uh, uh, Pol uh, Ebola in mm. 2014. And it is the same lessons that we've brought to our routine immunization program under this administration. See how we have progressively increased the coverage for routine immunization. We're beginning to work with our state governors uh, who have been in the forefront of not mm. only the polio eradication mm. effort, but also strengthening primary healthcare. So we're not going to be complacent. Mm. We're going to use the same types of uh, lessons around uh, delivery, around ruthless execution, holding people accountable. That is what brought us here and this is exactly what we're going to be doing in the next few years until we address some of the major issues that continue to bedevil us, the underfunding of primary healthcare, uh, you know, in the states and mm. local government areas, uh, making sure that people uh, know for certain that you need to give your kids vaccines, you have to take them to the primary health care centers, secondary and actually tertiary health care centers, because vaccines do work. This is for the doubters, uh, you know, that vaccines and all actually the do work. Yes. Absolutely. So, briefly, we're running out of time. Um, Post-COVID-19, what next for polio? Post-COVID-19, uh, we're going to 
see a different world where maybe not so much of contacts will be required, but we're going to be even more careful, making sure that the health of our clients are protected, uh, making sure that health workers are safeguarded and they feel okay. confident that they can provide services without the fear of being infected uh, by COVID-19. Uh, and that is why we're sort of restructuring and reimagining primary healthcare delivery. Mm. And we're excited about what the future uh, holds. We know that these are difficult times for, uh, for us because of the outbreak of COVID-19, mm. but I'm sure we're going to get over this and then we're going to look into a future where Nigerians will be very proud of the healthcare delivery that we've really laid out. It's an exciting moment we're in now. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Faisal. Shayub, Executive Secretary, National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. We'll take a break now. We'll be right back. COVID-19 cases in Nigeria have surged past 18,000 as the United Kingdom lowers its coronavirus alert level after steady decrease in infections. Let's join Joyce Ometu for latest developments on the pandemic. <laughs> 